Welcome to the Interesting Podcast number 25. This episode is John Gray Shermian. He and I met at Megacon, I want to say 2015 or so. Had to have been. Yeah, because I didn't go to 2016. 2015. And John Gray, I knew right away, was one of the coolest people ever. And a year and a half later, almost two years, I was right. Uh... John Gray, I say John Gray because he's got two first names because it's awesome. Uh, John Gray is in a band called Savants of Soul. If you haven't checked them out already, you absolutely should because they're fantastic. Uh, very different from a lot of music that you hear nowadays, and I I thoroughly enjoy it. I think you will as well. Uh, but this episode, we talk about the different bands he's been in. Uh, he just got back from tour, so he's got a lot of stories about that. Uh, I say right on and sure a lot, unrelated, but fun fact. Uh, we talk about how the Savants of Soul came to be, where the name came from, uh, playing different instruments. He has a lot of really good tips for people that are in bands and uh, want to further that. Um, how he booked his tour, different uh, tips for working amongst each other, which was great. Um, and a fun little, fun little thing on their writer. But I think you're, I think you're really going to like this. It's a great episode with a great dude. And, uh, yeah, I'll just, uh, get right to it. So, without further ado, the interesting podcast, episode number 25, with, uh, John Gray. Roll the theme song. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Just fine. Right on. Can you hear me at all? I don't. I've I've realized now after I've taken the trouble to set this up on my laptop that I probably just should have used uh, Danix's desktop because she's got like a really nice microphone. Right. But uh, uh, I don't know. I'm too late now. Yeah, I hear you. That's pretty much how I live my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how this works. And you can hear me. I can hear you. Well, golden. That's Sweet. That's all we need. So how you doing, yeah. man? I'm good. good. I'm good. Uh, hopefully, yeah. As long as I, as long as I don't feel like I'm sound like I'm underwater, I think uh, I think that's fine. That's my level of quality. I expect. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I think you're good. I think you're good. Wait. It's coming in loud and clear. But good yeah, deal. What's going on? Oh man, so many things. Um, uh, so do you do we have to do any sort of intro or are you recording already or? Yeah, it automatically. Call note automatically records when I start skyping. Oh yes, crap! That takes things. Yeah, I you, know, right? well, you can you can edit this to make me sound intelligent, right? So that'll oh, be that'll be if fine. If I could do that, I'd make myself sound intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I have guests on that are smarter than me. You're already doing all right. <laughs> Thanks, man. But uh, yeah, it's been weird trying to just figure this out. Yeah. To record Skype because there's like, with most things, you know, there's a hundred ways to do it. Right. But trying to figure it out to where it records, but it also sounds pretty all right, but then it saves to a file where I can find it, and it's it's so weird. That's why I do oh, it in yeah. person. <laughs> Technology's a pain. I know. I'm sorry we couldn't get to do it uh, whenever. What was that? When did I see you last? Because I know it was um, it was was it Tampa Bay? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it had to have been. Yeah, was, that after, was that after I had come back from tour, or was that before? Probably. I don't remember if I told you that story. You haven't. Let's get into that. That may be. I was like, I don't know if I have much interesting content to provide, but I, I at least have that. You're you're so, in a band. Yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. Yes, a band so with a really cool name. The internet. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I am in a band. I've been in a couple bands. Um, uh, I was in a ska band for like six years, like a ska punk band. Um, called Shotgun Diplomacy, which I named in high school. Right. Um, we weren't like hardcore <laughs> at all. It basically we were just trying to think of things that sounded cool, and we thought that sounded cool. 
And so, you know, when you would see us on flyers, I think people would think we were going to be like really, really intense and like political punk rock or something. And then basically all our songs were about like video games. And then I, I like wrote a song about 4chan and stuff. Um, so we, we had a niche uh, appeal to, to say the least, I would say. But that was a lot of fun. Sure. Uh, so we did that. I had that. And then uh, I'm in a, yeah, I'm in a nine piece soul band now. That's intense. Uh, yeah. That's a, that's a lot of people to wrangle. Oh, my God, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of used to it because the ska band was seven people, so it's not that many more. Sure. But, uh, yeah, nine – and nine is small. Like, we used to be – we were ten. We were up to 13 people for a while, oh. you know? It's like a and, legit band. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of people because um, we got, you know, guitar, bass, drums, keys, two vocal – well, one vocal now, and then we have – four horns and one of our horn players also sings so it's a lot of people gotcha. yeah and a lot of uh personalities to try and you know organize sure um and i'm sure like so you're uh you know you're you're a artistic creative type i am indeed uh, and uh i know um that i'm trying to say this delicately but so <laughs> so us uh, artistic creative types can be lovely people and uh, i mean most of my friends are sure but it can be difficult to wrangle a lot of them on the same page and like actually accomplish something. For sure. You know, so For that's sure. always a bit of a, a bit of a challenge. Even just getting nine people in the same room week to week uh, and trying to accomplish something is a bit of a challenge. Oh, so. sure. Scheduling alone. And yes. Then, and then from a technical standpoint, having that many people on stage, you know, with inputs and mics and oh man, I can't imagine. Yeah, we we uh, preemptively apologize to every sound guy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but a lot of them are really nice. A lot of them, uh, a lot of them are, are. I feel like there's like sound guys are either awesome or it's like their job to just be surly. You sure. know, it's sure. like they all have to pass some certification where they're like, oh, how much do you know about you know mic inputs and everything? They're like, ah, eh, well, I know this much, and they'll be like, okay, that's fine, cool, that that's good enough. All right, now, very importantly, can you just <laughs> Pretend that you hate everybody and hate your job and hate the world 100% of the time. Exactly. And if you say yes and they're like, all right, cool, you got the job. We want you to do something that is integral to a band, but we want you to not like bands. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, if you like bands, what are you doing here? Yeah. Exactly. Get exactly. out of here. We're not here for yeah. music. All right, what's wrong with you? <laughs> We're here for channels. Channels <laughs> of power, that is it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, why'd you get into sound design? Or why'd you get into... Uh, being a sound guy at venues, well, you know, yeah, I was just really into into microphones, <laughs> and sound design, and not human beings. But I'm really into self-loathing, so I felt like it was a good fit. Yeah, you know? and it's been it's been a ride. It's been a ride. Right. <laughs> like I played that game where you have to like you know connect the the conduits. You got like the power line without running into other things. It's like I was oh, really yeah. I was really good at that. So I just yeah. kind of ventured into sound design. See, there you go. If you were more of an asshole, you could uh, you could jump right in. I mean, I'm good at I'm good at faking things. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yes. Speaking of fake, faking things for a living, you're doing a lot more acting now. I am. I am. It's, um, um, it's going very yeah. well. Yeah, I'm just curious about that. Sure. Yeah. No. This <laughs> this podcast uh, there is no line of no conscious line of thought. It's just whatever. Um, okay. Yeah. It um. Let's see. I signed an NDA, so I can't talk about the li the latest one, but I'm gonna be in another movie. That's gonna be really good. Awesome. Yeah, I, the script is really good, and there's there's some people involved that are uh, maybe some people that other people might know, kind of thing. It's a ah. So that's that's fun. Um, awesome. Yeah, I got the table read for that um, next weekend. So Sweet, dude. I'm real pumped. Is it a that. feature? Yeah. Feature length? Damn. Yeah, it's another feature. So. That's awesome. I still need to see. Uh, I still need to see Tethered. I feel bad. You do. It's good. Um, it's I've good. heard that. I've heard. Didn't you guys win some stuff? We did. We got. We won Best Picture at one of the festivals. That is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty cool. And then there we got. Um, I think the main actor got nominated, and then we got nominated for Best Humor, which I take credit for. Cause Heck that's yes. Hilarious in that movie. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm sure it's well deserved. Hold on, yeah. I'm writing myself a note that I need to. Yes, watch Tethered. To find that. I just like, it's it's so rare that I just sit down and watch movies anymore, which is which is sad. That I should is, be doing that. That is literally all I do is watch movies. That's 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 dope, man. It's the best. I just need 
I just need more time. I need more time for all the things I want to do. I, I feel know. like, you know, that's the bad part about the band is it's, uh, God, it's just so much of my life. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's worth it. But like, I have a backlog of video games, like five video games long, you know, or more. Sure. And, uh, I, I have so many TV shows that I've been, like watched two episodes of and been like, God, this is awesome, and then you never get to to finish it. But someday, sure, I keep saying someday, future me will finish all this stuff and it'll be That's great. That's right. That's right. What yeah. what, is, what is your Muggle job? Because you got oh my Muggle now. job. Yeah. I'm a uh, I uh, work in healthcare administration. Oh, right on. Right on. Yeah, that sounds like it takes a lot of brain power. It. It's it is time consuming and not particularly that interesting to talk about. Sure. I can if people care, but uh, I mean, I don't know. It's it deals with uh, a lot of the new healthcare law and oh. all that jazz. Right on. Uh, I deliver of, newspapers, yeah. so. <laughs> sorry. I deliver newspapers, so uh, sorry. I feel you. Right on. <laughs> You're like you know, job is job. That's why we do fun things like being a band and acting movies. Absolutely, yeah. And hopefully that becomes a job later. I mean, that's, that's the hope. I do get paid. You know, it, it is always fun. You know, and I take my like uh, five hundred dollars I make from the band a month home, sure. and I'm be like, yes, exactly. I earned something with my art. Right. You know, I'll take I'll take this paltry amount, even if it's nothing. Sure. Um, so I mean, we're doing a, we're doing we're doing good though. Um, that's awesome. So yeah. So like, so tour. Yeah. How did, how did that go? Yeah, so um all right, so podcast listeners, I'm in a uh I'm in a nine piece like soul revival band called the Savants of Soul, which is I don't know, you've heard us before, right? Uh, I've listened to you online, haven't seen you in concert yet. Any, okay. Anytime I see the concert pop up, I'm like, Why is it so far away? <laughs> yeah, we need to get down to South Florida. We've done um we keep going north or we get far and we get like down to Orlando or Tampa, but Beyond that, it's like it's such a long drive, you know. Tell basically, have to, you know, absolutely. I'm sure you know. <laughs> I basically have to um, string together like four shows to make it worth worth our time. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of these days, one of these days, we'll make it happen. One day, and when you do, you let me know. Absolutely, dude. Um, I think our our live show is really our strength too. Like our our stuff that we've recorded, I'm I'm really happy with, but. Uh, our live show is definitely our, our biggest strength because we try because we're all kids from uh, you know like we're all from punk bands and stuff. Sure. Uh, we have no business playing a soul music. I mean, <laughs> the horn players were all in jazz bands, but like all the rhythm section was all in punk bands, and so we all like play soul music, but we play it like our version, which is balls to the wall, and we all jump around and have a great time. Sure. And so the, I feel like the energy we bring on stage is the sort of special sauce that we have, if we have exactly. any special sauce. Um, but we all wear, we all play in black suits. So, um, you know, try to capture that sort of vintage aesthetic a little bit sure. uh, to, you know, uh, contrast with the jumping around everywhere, I guess. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. So we went on. So we went on our first tour in in the summer. Um, that was your first and, tour. Yeah. So we oh, we've done know. like weekenders and stuff. Um, but once again, nine people. It's hard to get uh, nine people in a van um, going a really long way. Uh, you know, for weeks at a time, just because of scheduling. Sure. Because um, fortunately, all of us still have jobs right now. Um, but it was uh, all in all, all the shows were really successful. Everything around the shows could not have been worse. <laughs> oh no! So um, we have a we have a bus. It's like a 2006 uh, old like wheel wheelchair transit van type of thing. Oh, so it's right. got like a lift in the back, which is cool. So we can move merch and equipment, and it can fit all of us. And, and I drive it. I'm the one that drives it. Right. Um, and we were like, all right. Um, it's working. We had an old bus that broke down on us like five times. Oh no. And so everyone was really off buses, but we got a new bus and it was working pretty well. And, and we were like, all right, um, I think we've rebuilt enough trust to trust the bus up the, uh, East coast. So we did like some shows in Georgia and South Carolina, North Carolina. We had a really great show in Raleigh. Raleigh's a really cool city. Raleigh is cool. 
Yeah, you're from North Carolina, right? I am from North Carolina. Not from Raleigh, uh, but I'm from North Carolina. <laughs> where where in North Carolina are you from? Uh, I was born in Elizabeth City because it was the closest hospital, but I grew up in Maple, a small little farm outside of uh, that's in the Outer Banks. Gotcha. If you, if you were to look at North Carolina, it's the far top right corner, like right near the Virginia uh, state line. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Cool. I've been all over. North Carolina. Right on. North Carolina is a, a beautiful place with mountains and a lot of racist people, but uh. yes, <laughs> it is. It is. It is really beautiful state. Like no yeah, doubt about sure. that. Um, and I thought Raleigh was a cool town. Uh, Raleigh's cool. It's big. Granted, I didn't see that much of it, but the downtown where we were was pretty sweet. And the show was like packed out, which never happens for your really? first show. Right on. Yeah, it never happens for your first show in a new place, so that made us feel really good. We did, when we came into Raleigh, though, we were uh, staying with my cousin, because my cousin lives in Raleigh, and he just got a new house, but it's tiny, because it's just him and his girlfriend, and there's nine of us, and (laughs) I think, I don't think he realized how many of us there were, so we got to his house, and we're like, this is really nice of you, man, but there's literally not enough floor space for us all to lay down in your house, much less, like actual accommodation right. you know there's just not even enough floor space so we had to scramble and he was like okay there's this one old motel which you can probably get a, a room in called the king's motel um and so we were like all right went over to this place and it's like the most murdery place <laughs> you could possibly imagine if you imagine um you know the motel in movies where they go to bust the guy that's like on the lamb um, hiding out, you know, it's sure. that hotel, you know, <laughs> it's the actual hotel from vacancy. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or, um, or where the guys, you know, um, stash meth in his pants and is running from somebody or the dude is going to cheat on his wife, whatever. Right. <laughs> I'm sure all of that happens there. The so we, after, hotel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So after the show, we pull up and I have the navigation going and, um, it's taking us to like the industrial, like ass side of town. <laughs> And I don't already don't feel good. And I'm like, is this absolutely the right way for us to be going? And we turn around the corner um, and there's this just giant, really ominous looking, just industrial factory with these, you know, lights shining up. And it looks like, you know, the uh, like Mount Doom or something, (laughs) just towers and ominous light. And then right in front of it, really, you know, small, it says King's Motel. So there's this teeny little motel in front of this, like. You know, factory, which we found out later was a dog food factory. Oh, right on. Yeah. <laughs> you found <It's>, Gotham. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Interesting t- tidbit, I guess. Um, but that was okay. So some of us stayed there. Some of us stayed with my cousin. Nobody got Hep C or anything. That's so a, that's I think a plus. you're okay. Good yeah. way to start the tour. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so the next day, we got up and had to drive five hours across the state to Johnson City. Uh, and which is like, an, I don't know if you know where that is in Tennessee. I do not. It's I like right through Tennessee. Yeah, there's like no reason to know anything about it. Um, sure. It's it's right on the. Apologies to anybody if you live in. Yeah. City. <laughs> it is really pretty. It's just like nothing there. Um, sure. It's right across the border um, into Tennessee, so it's still very much in the mountains. Um, and we pivoted there. It wasn't like a first choice to play there. So we're going through. And I'm excited because I was like, yeah, it's five hours, but this is the pretty drive. This is the drive through the mountains. Sure. Um, and as we're going up, you get into the foothills and everything's starting to look nice. You see the mountains coming up in the distance. And um, I'm getting really excited because now the last three hours are left, and this is the really pretty part. Sure. Uh, as I'm going up this hill, um, the engine starts running really rough. Oh, no. And, yeah. Oh, no. And uh, I start just, like, sadly watching the um, needle on the speedometer just go down and down. And, like, you're I'm hitting the accelerator and it's just not doing anything. Okay. Uh, and I'm like, great. So go, we're going up this long, not that steep hill. And uh, I'm slowing down and slowing down, starting to pull to the side of the road. And you hear an explosion under the hood. And so I definitely pull off the road at that point. <laughs> And yeah, yeah. apparently I screamed like a little bitch. I cannot confirm, but that's there are rumors to that effect. Yes. I'll leave it there. <laughs> the tale is uh, told throughout that mountain. The tale has been told. <laughs> not by me. 
Um, <laughs> as, and turns out we had blown a spark plug out. Like the spark plug had just ex shot out of the engine and was like sitting in the engine cavity, which is definitely not where it's supposed to be. No, that is, that's uh, not, that doesn't work. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know a whole lot of about cars but i'm pretty sure that's not what it's supposed to do <laughs> so we had to so we're stuck in the mountains on the side of the road obviously we missed the show in johnson city and this is saturday night um we're in rural ass um north carolina i found out we were like 10 miles away from boone okay. um, which is pretty also yeah. nothing there though uh, <laughs> so we're like shit we have to find a way to get to this show that we have in knoxville the next night um of course, nobody works on anything on a Sunday no. in rural North Carolina. Why would you do that? Yeah. And also, um, uh, so we could either tow back the other direction two and a half hours to one place that said they might be able to work on it because their website has got their hours listed. But when I called them, they didn't even pick up. So I was like, <laughs> that doesn't seem like the best choice of action. Yeah, so we decide just to tow into the um, – you know, uh, into Boone, into the Ford dealership in Boone and get it fixed on Monday. We just have to find a different way to Knoxville and we'll have to leave our equipment and use another band's equipment in Knoxville. Then we'll have to come back and get the bus later. Oh, uh, so start looking for places to stay. Of course, <laughs> this happens to be the one weekend of the year that Boone is just freaking hopping because it's the uh, Highland Games of North Carolina. Oh, so, right on. <laughs> yeah, so you can't get a room anywhere. We yeah. found one one bed in this place called like the Shamlanaya something, I don't know, some <laughs> Indian named spa up in the mountains. So we're like, all right, we'll book that. And um, then we happened to put out like an all points help us bulletin on our social media. And one of our friends from Gainesville happened to be visiting his family in Boone, North Carolina that weekend. So we got super lucky wow. and most of us were able to stay with him. Uh, and we found that we could get um, some two rental vans in Asheville, which is like two and a half hours south. So he had to, and he had to drive us all the way to Asheville the next day. And then we had to come back up um, from Asheville uh, and load everything back in and then go back to Knoxville uh, and then play in Knoxville the next day, half the band goes back on to Nashville where we had the other show, and then three of us went back across, back to Boone, which is like three hours, picked the um, bus back up. It broke again on the way out of the um, oh. dealership. <laughs> so then we were stuck in Boone again. The next day, I found like the one uh, U-Haul, the literally the one U-Haul truck they had in Boone um, at this like tractor uh, dealership and rented from this one guy that has a desk in this other guy's office. And it was just like, <laughs> it was such a freaking crazy experience. Um, so we ended the ended up finishing the tour with like one box truck and a 12 passenger van, you know? Wow. It was crazy. Man. <laughs> it was totally crazy. That makes for a great story though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I didn't even tell you. So yeah, more weird shit that happened. So this yeah. place up in the mountains, uh, I didn't hear this cause I wasn't there. <laughs> Apparently, this was like definitely a temple or something. It was not a hotel at all. So oh. they, um, my friends that, uh, it was our guitar player and our trumpet player went up there and they were like, yeah, we had to sign that we wouldn't like disrupt the, you know, aura of the place while we were here um, oh. or, you know, disclose anything to anybody. Uh, so I don't know, maybe they did weird cult shit and I'm not allowed right, to. Yeah. <laughs> that's, no, why, no. that's why the tour went well. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. When um, our guitar player came down, he took a fake vow of silence for like a, <laughs> two days and it pissed our drummer off so much. I, I thought it was hilarious. He did not think it was hilarious. Because um, he was like, yeah, I had a spiritual awakening and I've taken a vow of silence now. <laughs> so, yeah, man. Um, That's fantastic. That was tour. Oh, also, on the way back up from Asheville, I was driving one of the vans. And the dude gave me, my friend gave me the wrong address to his parents' house. So I got lost in the mountains on the way back. And once you get into the mountains, it's very difficult to get back out if you don't know where you're going. Sure. Uh, so I was like driving around rural, you know, Appalachia for like 45 minutes being like, all right, my phone's not working. I can't find any way out of here. I'm definitely lost forever. Everyone probably <laughs> thinks I died. Uh, I can't call anybody. 
Uh, and I happened to just find some dude walking along the side of the road. And I was like, oh, God, please just help me. Um, hey, can you get me back to town? Uh, sure. And he's like, yeah, well, what town do you want to go to? And I was like, well, to tell you the truth, I'm really trying to get to whatever the address is. And he's like, oh, um, Pine Swamp Lane, huh? Do you mean West Pine Swamp Lane? And I was like, maybe. And he's like, are you Martin's friend? And I was like, what are the chances of this? <laughs> so that, I've just randomly found his, his uncle walking down the road. Dude. And that's what got me back home. So. Life is so funny. Especially, it's so strange, like, right? There's so many yeah. people in the world that like you don't realize how different things are like around you. Like for instance, yeah. two nights ago on on my route, I delivered to stores. I don't do like the fun home stuff, you know, out the window. Oh, I do like gotcha. big bulk orders. So gotcha. I do like bundles to Publixes and Starbucks and gas stations and whatnot. And there was a guy outside of a CVS that I delivered to. I walked in, gave him the papers, walked out, and the guy just seemed real tired. Like he didn't seem drugged or high or anything or drunk or anything. So I was like, all right, right, let's see what's going on. He asked for some change. I was like, I don't have any cash. Here's what I have in my car. You know, it's like a dollar. And he's like, and he asked me, he goes, do you know a place where they're like, where the homeless people hang out? And I was like, I don't. He goes, cause I did, I just rode my bike, di bike here in Naples from Virginia. Holy hell, dude. And I was like, why <laughs> and he's like well i just got divorced and my wife took everything i got no money no place to live so i wanted to see the beach i was like you, wow that's over a thousand miles man <laughs> i feel like there are closer beaches there so are <laughs> <laughs> the outer banks where i'm from in north carolina has beaches. Right. Yeah. <laughs> granted the water is colder he's like no i want Nap naples is the beach i'm going to yeah he's I'm like i don't even know where i am as well yeah. yeah i was like i i can't help you man i'm sorry so I, I ended up finding a homeless shelter for him, but you know, you just never know anyone Absolutely. from anywhere. And like, that's so funny that in the middle of the mountains, you happen yep. to come across that. That's so great. And yeah. The, dyna great. the dynamic of bands is always really funny. Yeah. I, um, I followed a band called fellow bliss a couple years ago and, uh, they broke up a couple of years back, but they were like my favorite band. I went to like nine of their concerts over the summer. They were a local band out of like Southwest Florida. Cool. Ended, up, ended up touring into Missouri and did some shows. But it was so I'm funny to see. Up. Yeah, I highly recommend. Yes. Um, I really, really like them. And I became best friends with some of the members, just you know, mm -hmm. basically being a groupie. Um, and to hear their back and forth, like your, your guitar player takes a, a vow of silence and it bugs the drummer. Like, yep. It's so funny, the dynamics of people, specifically musicians. You know, oh, absolutely. Just, just a bunch of like crazy creative people that are and musicians are a specific type of person as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's so funny. It's so funny to hear the vow of silence. That is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> man. I mean, Austin is our he's a, our guitar player's mm -hmm. player's name. I I love him to death. He's a cool dude. But like he's it, it was the great thing is it was like almost believable because he's <laughs> into really like occult weird shit mm -hmm. and he's a mason. Oh right. Yeah. So you're like, um, it adds up. <laughs> right. And so he, like, if if there's believable that anybody would have, you know, sort of, like, joined a weird organization and, like, had a weird experience, it was definitely going to be him. Sure. So it was, like, just believable enough to really piss Alex off. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. So how, how did Savants of Soul come to be? Um... So my roommate Alex, well, ex-roommate Alex, um, uh, and my friend Brandon Stern and I um, started it because um, I, I have this Motown sampler album, like four LP, one of these like, you know, ones that they probably sold for like nothing back in the day to sort of basically advertise Motown bands, you know? Sure. Um, so definitely not worth anything to collectors, but it's a really good album and it's got a lot of good music on it. So whenever we would have house parties, that was like our go-to thing to throw on the turntable uh, oh, cool. it is this Motown record. And Alex was like, man, this stuff's really good. I've never heard of this before. And I was like, you've never heard Motown songs before? <laughs> what sort of weird upbringing did you have? Um, sure. Yeah. You didn't grow up in the 40s? Come on. Man. Yeah, exactly. It was, <laughs> yeah. Like me, you're not strange. So um, he was like, yeah, this stuff is great. Um, and so we, uh, you know, he was sort of wanting to start a Motown band. And I've always wanted to be 
to do soul music because it's been something I've sort of grown up with, like dancing around my kitchen with my mom playing, you know, Aretha Franklin or Otis Redding and stuff. Sure. Um, so I, for me, it felt very much like going back to my childhood. Right. Um, and I really wanted to be a part of it. Um, and he was like, yeah, if I'm going to start this band, I'm, I want you to be a part of it. Uh, but... I don't want you to play guitar. And at this point, I was just, I was a guitarist and I was a singer. He was like, I think you should be the bass player because um, in Motown, the bass is more sort of like the the basis. Sure. Uh, you know, no pun intended, <laughs> but whatever. It, it's more of like the serious building block of the rhythm section than the guitar sure. is. It's the whole bottom um, of the music. Exactly. And he's like, that's what you do well. Um, sure. So would you learn how to play bass? And I was like, uh, okay, I guess. And so we started, um, I was playing bass, like not very well with a pick, very like, you know, punk rock style. Sure. And then our guitar player, who's a much better guitar player than I am anyway, so it's probably better that right. he had that position. And is just a really creative guy. Um, so we were just going to be like a three-piece sort of soul-influenced like pop indie punk thing. Sure. I don't know. Titles, you know, and, titles, titles. Yeah, exactly. You get it. You get <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> so we started writing songs, and it was fun. Um, we sort of, you know, he would sing a song, and then I would sing a song, or we'd all sort of sing together. Um, and the idea was we just wanted to write really incredibly catchy stuff that was um, sort of in that, like, 60s soul vein. Sure. Uh, so we were doing that for a while, and then we were like, eh, you know what? I'd, we'd rather like do more interesting thing on, things on our instruments and just sing backup and get a singer um, that just sings, and that way they can sort of do all that like Motown singer stuff where you like you know like James Brown where you like grab the mic and like flip sure. it down and do you all the a, cool. You need a showman frontman. Oh, exactly, sure. exactly. So um, we got my sister because she's a great jazz singer, and oh, right yeah, and she was great. Um, we, so we added her and then we added, um, a keyboard so we could have like organ, like, sure. you know, cause all those bands have like that, you, you know, that 60s organ. sound is so good. Yeah. Um, so that was our lineup. We had, uh, we played like a couple house shows and had a really good response. And then my sister was like, Hey, um, this is really fun. I'm having a great time, but, um, I am, you know, this is my senior year of high school and I don't think I have enough time for this because I'm getting ready for college. And I was like, okay, sure. fine. So she left and we got my friend Justin in. Um, and he is uh, an amazing front man. And I used to play in a ska band with him called The Partial. So he could already, he used to sing and play guitar in that band. Um, and uh, he's, he's, God, he's just an amazing front man. He's a good singer too. Sure. Um, obviously, you have to be. Sure. Sure. But, like his real greatest strength is the guy just he really knows how to deal with the crowd and how to get the crowd participating sure. uh, and really make it a show, not make it just, hey, we're playing music, very much make it, you know, an experience and like a theatrical thing. Sure. Um, so at that point, we were like, all right, we abandon what we're going to do. We were doing before. Let's just be a real soul band. You know, so right. we we're like, Justin, you're just going to sing and we're going to bring on uh, some backup singers. We're going to bring on some horns. We're going to expand this thing out huge, which is not what we wanted to do originally because we'd all been in big bands. We're like, oh, let's just keep it small because it'll be easier. But we were like, it sounds so good. You just right, have to yeah. do it. <laughs> so we did. And we were like, and we're all going to wear suits and maintain like an aesthetic, um, right. which I think is a big part of what we do. It is uh, cool so yeah, so that's sort of how it evolved, and then we've just kept, um, you know, writing since then. And you know, we're such a big band, we we probably change we change members all the time because sure. it's just so many people. Just there's the probably been yeah, there's probably been close to like thirty people that have been in this band over the five years that we've existed. Cool. So yeah, man. And you're still around, which is great. <laughs> we are, we are, and doing more, more bigger things. Uh, I don't know when you're going to release this, but I'll plug this just in case. Yeah, by all means. Um, we're playing Halloween at the end of October, which is a big national festival, which is in um, the Spirit of the Swanee campgrounds uh, oh, cool. in North Florida. 
um, which is going to be a very big show. Um, Lettuce is playing. Um, who else is playing? Uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember right now. But there's there's like uh, Mo, my morning jacket's playing. Oh cool. Um, I don't know. It's got a really great lineup that for some reason is completely leaving my head at this particular moment. But yeah, <laughs> check it out. It's going to yeah. be a great. Show. I'll definitely have it up in time for that. Beautiful. <clears throat> so Savants of Soul. That's a really cool name. Um, yeah, so we were just going to be the savants because we really wanted to be a the somethings. Sure, also cool. Um, yeah, and uh, that was already taken by like some other band that had like a couple hundred likes. So we were like, uh, I guess we can't do that. So and I had already made our Gmail account, and I just stuck of soul on the end because the savants at Gmail was already taken. Of course. And you um, know Alex. Too. <laughs> yeah, Alex was like, "Well, shit, we already have the email address. I guess we'll just do that." And that's where the name came from. Really yeah. exciting story. <laughs> I, I respect that. You know, yeah. there there are far less exciting uh, origins of names out there. Yeah. <laughs> I spilled Maybe a cup so. and I became the accident, you know. That's right. That's right. Oh, all right. That's that's fun. Cool, dude. No, that's cool. That's cool. Um, so you started out as a guitar player. Did you teach yourself? Did you take lessons? Was that your first instrument you played? Um, so I'm interested. I, I actually played the bagpipes. First? first your yeah. first instrument was bagpipes yeah for but i was never very good like <laughs> i was not okay i was not a cool kid uh, i don't I'm know still, you started with bagpipes it's pretty cool <laughs> i mean yes i think so yes but, uh, I yes agree. Accord, according to our really messed up standards yeah. that is very cool i agree with you but yeah. um like yeah so when i was in middle school i was like uh you know about the height i am but probably weighed like you know, 35 pounds less. And, um, I used to, um, spend all of my, uh, break time making Star Wars Lego movies in the, um, computer lab with my friend Keenan. So that was the kind of guy I was in middle school. Just did we just become best friends? Yeah. Dude, <laughs> we're, we're, we're already, we're already friends. Yeah. We're, pa is, we're past that. Yeah. This is, this is old news. We've just um, reached a new level of best. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> just ratcheted it up a little bit. That's right. Um, so, yeah, I wish I could find those, actually, because, uh, you know, I'm going to go off on a tangent for a second. That's what but this podcast is, is just tangents. Did you, um, you played the Knights of the Old Republic game, and not Knights of the Old Republic, I know you played Knights of the Old Republic, did you play the um, uh, Jedi Knight games? Yes, I did, and the Jedi Academy, and Outlast, yeah. and all those, yeah. yeah. So we, we really loved those. This was, like, prior to KOTOR. This was, like, yes. you know, 2002, probably, maybe 2003. Right. Um, and so Keenan and I were really into those games and basically all of the Star Wars stuff we made was like fan film stuff about that took place after Return of the Jedi, but starred like Kyle Katarn as the yes. main character. Yes. So that was like all the stuff we made. I wish I could find it somewhere because I was, I was pretty, uh, you know, I mean, I was happy with some of our, our very budget special effects we did. Sure. Yeah, man. That's awesome. Um, but dude, bag, yeah. bagpipes. Bagpipes. Yeah, I don't know. I really did not give a shit, I guess. Which Good. is, I guess, kind of cool. It's it's so you know? punk. Junk it was very... I, I never will be more punk than I was. <laughs> <laughs> As a nerdy kid in middle school wanting to play the bagpipes. It's true. That's I'm very it. true. I'm so yeah. for it. Um, so... Uh, I was small and not particularly good at playing the bagpipes because you have to have a you have to be kind of a bigger dude and have sure. a really big lung capacity. Um, so I got okay at it and I just sort of fell off. Like I could play a couple things, um, but I had fun with it. And then, like about a year later, uh, my mom was like, "Hey, you know, maybe you should try the guitar because it's you know easier and you don't have to blow into it and you can sing with it if you want." And I was like. Uh, okay, yeah, guitar's pretty cool. And I was sure. listening to a lot of music with, um, you know, with guitar in it. Uh, and, yeah, so, I don't know, I started playing in um, the end of middle school and kept playing and then um, started a, a punk band in junior year of high school. And that punk band evolved into Shotgun Diplomacy and then, you know, we became a ska punk band and played basically all through college in that band um and was in a couple other side projects over the years but yeah that's pretty time. awesome my first instrument was a trombone oh heck yeah 
I, I started yeah. in sixth grade, and I was very, very small growing up. Like, I didn't hit my growth spurt until right before my freshman year of high school. So gotcha. I, w- I was four foot ten when I graduated middle school. Damn. I was super tiny. So yeah. the trombone is, like, almost as big as me. Yeah. <laughs> I actually couldn't reach seventh position. I had to turn my <laughs> head to reach it real quick. <laughs> Which made me feel kind of cool because, you know, you're just, everyone's playing concert and then I do a little like, bam. bam. <laughs> See, that's cool. You were doing like all the like horn moves that's already. That's right. It prepared yeah. me for high school where I did, you know, four years of marching band and three years of jazz band and all that. That's stuff. awesome. So I did trombone and that, with using a mouthpiece and developing an embouchure, you know, you pick up baritone. I, uh, yep. in, in seventh grade, I broke my arm. And I couldn't play trombone anymore, so I learned tuba. Because even with a cast, you can reach the valves. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> and the tuba weighed as much as I did and was bigger than me. So we they, had to, like, prop it up on a chair next to me. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't give you a sousaphone? Uh, no, they did not. They didn't have any in my middle oh, school. So I feel like that'd be a lot easier to deal with. Yeah, yeah. You just kind of – you just, you just got to figure out how to lean it. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> and then you reach your arm in there and <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> That's um, awesome. Yeah, music's cool. Playing instruments is cool, and how it, it evolves. Is. Like you, you play guitar first. So, how difficult was it for you to pick up bass coming from guitar? Um. So I actually, so I played guitar, and then I learned. Uh, I played banjo, and you I played play, banjo. Yeah, not Dude. particularly well, but, but I played said, banjo, what? and I play tenor banjo and mandolin and a couple other things. Basically. I was on a quest to get like mediocre at every fretted stringed instrument for a little while. I respect that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so learning like basically picking at the bass is not hard because it's it's the same tuning. It's just the low four strings oh, of right. a guitar one octave down. Um, right. So all of the, you know, your scales are the same. Everything is the same. Um, and I was started playing with a pick, so it was, I mean, it was real easy to pick up and I had a short scale, so it was like a lot closer to a a guitar, but now, um, I actually, it's funny. Uh, I stopped using a pick about a year in because I just didn't like the sound I was getting and I started training my fingers and now I don't play with a pick anymore. Um, and I'm really quick with my fingers now and I play a full, full size, uh, bass Right. And it's funny to me because when I go back, because I play bass so much more than guitar now, uh, and try and play guitar, like I can't, I cannot pick nearly as quickly as I used to be able to. Um, sure. Like using a pick is so alien to me now because I'm used to using my fingers. So I, I it's really right. funny, you know, how quick uh, you lose stuff if you don't know, practice it. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. Anyway. That was yeah. like um, playing trombone. I was really, really good. I'm not gonna lie. I have few, I have very little confidence in a lot of my abilities, but I was very good at that. But sure. taking the summer off and coming back that first week, I was terrible. Yeah. And it was just kind of you just gotta keep practice. Practice. No, is so it's important. so true. Especially brass instruments are the worst. Oh yeah, your you lips know? will bleed. Like <laughs> absolutely, you lose it so quickly. Um, For sure. I've uh, I, I've never played a brass instrument, but being in uh, well jazz band in high school, and then being in a ska band for six years, and then this band. I mean, I've been around a lot of brass players, and it's true. Like, it's such a more physical thing, I feel like, you oh, know? for sure. For sure. I mean, you know, there's breath control, there's t- hitting the notes, and then the embouchure, you know, the tightness of your lips to create the certain notes. That, yeah. in and of itself, is difficult. Absolutely. Um, I remember w- when I used to take the time off, I'd actually carry my mouthpiece around with me. And just keep up with that and like buzz in that to keep yeah uh, absolutely you know, keep the practice going because your lips will bleed if you go yeah. if you don't play for forever and then you go full at it it hurts <laughs> absolutely man I mean and even you know if you push yourself too much uh, even if you play all the time you can still mess your lips up really bad for sure like um, if you hear the story about Louis Armstrong splitting his lip open at a show that was the one where a ton of blood came out right yeah so yeah. he. He used to do this thing where he would hit at the end of his solos, like at the end of the night, he would hit um, three, crap, I don't know, if, uh, it's whatever note is like insanely, insanely high on a trumpet, but it's hittable if sure. you're like ridiculous. <laughs> if you're but a hard hit, demigod. <laughs> right, exactly. But like hitting it once is ridiculous and he would hit three of them in a row. Uh, and this is like his, his thing he would do at the end of his solos and it is insanely impressive. 
Um, but because he was had so much pressure um, with the, the mouthpiece on his lip, and from doing it night to night, he built up like a callus on his lip. Oh. And one night he tried to go a little farther, and basically the, it was just so much pressure at the very end that, yeah, he split this callus open and there was just blood all over the place. Oh, and, can you uh, imagine like, being yeah. there for that? I mean, that's, that's it's it's commitment. <laughs> it's commitment. Yeah, you know? that's what made him Louis Armstrong. <laughs> exactly. I mean, the guy was, you know, yeah, he's the, he's the best for a reason. Have, but, you, yeah. uh, have you tried play, playing ukulele? I have. It's yeah. uh, it, it's uh, not the same as the bass. <laughs> no, it is not the same as I, the bass. I played bass for two years, two three years in like a church band a bunch of years ago, and um, wasn't great. wasn't great. I I picked up things, got better. I could never use a pick. I just can't. It doesn't work. That's Fingers fine. You're, good. you're way more legit as a bass player if you don't use, use a pick anyway. Yeah, I just, that's right. I'm going on record with it. Pick yeah, right? bass players. <laughs> that's right. That's right. John Gray calls people out. That's right. Um, so I, I just could never do it, and I have like these little meerkat hands. So th with <laughs> with a full size bass, the frets are massive. They are. They're <laughs> so so I had, big. I had to do the same thing where I was like a, a bounce to hit a note, you know, yep. two frets away. Oh yeah. Um, I've got technique, all right. Yeah, and, dude. Um, I so I got a ukulele because I was like, oh, I want to learn this tiny little instrument that you can just sure. carry everywhere. It sounds fun. I have small yeah. hands. It's a small instrument. Right. And I was like, it'll be the same. It's four strings, and it is. It is not at all. No, <laughs> You've got, tuning like, is so weird. And another one, and it's like, it's like they start, but they're not chromatic, and no. then it's backwards halfway. Through. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't. How how is it tuned? I don't have a ukulele, um, but I played one before. It's like tuned super weird. Yeah, like yeah, the weird. guitar is basically and the bass is tuned in fifths, so it makes sense. And like a violin and all those, like cello, all those are tuned in fourths, so that makes sense. But yeah, a ukulele is like, it's just wacky sax. It's his you own know? thing. It's, it's really strange. I mean, I love it now. It's, I have a thing now where I'm learning different techniques by playing it. Like that took forever as well, just like doing strumming because yeah. I'm yeah, used yeah. to picking. Right, right. Um, but then I can do like maybe nine, maybe nine or ten chords. I don't know what they are, but I can do them. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, I could play the song and I know these notes. I just don't know what it is. It's probably a G. I don't know. I'm just, yeah. I'm just going to strum it. That's awesome. We gotta. All right, you gotta bring an instrument next time we hang out. Right. Let's, let's jam. Yeah, bring bring your uke. I'll bring uh, whatever you want me to bring. It'll be bring, a good time. Bring yourself. Oh, compliments. Uh, oh. oh, thanks, babe. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fun. It's very fun. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so you just got back from tour. Uh, do you definitely want to tour again <laughs> with a better bus this time, perhaps? Well, we're doing. Uh, it's been a while now, you know. It's been a couple months, but we we're going back on tour in March, and but right. this time we're going west. And the plan is we're going to tour to Southwest, uh, South by Southwest in Austin. Oh, right on. And play that show, Dude. and then tour back. That's that's um, big news. Yeah, so that'll be great. Especially in Austin. I'm very excited. About that. Austin's yeah. a super, you know, music town, music and movies. Absolutely. I've only but, been once, but it was cool. I have I have yet to go. I want to real bad. Um. How do you go about booking a tour for a band? For anyone that's in a band and listening to this, like, how did that oh, come about? It's, I mean, I can't imagine the amount of planning. And it's such a pain in the ass. Um, yeah. <laughs> the best, the good, the easy thing to do is find a booking agency that's good and get them to t book a tour for you. But we didn't do that. Um, <laughs> that's what I've heard and, is the best. And our label have. gives us zero tour support because they're they're really nice, but they're like they're you know not big sure. um they just don't have the resources it's so similar to acting agencies yeah exactly we'll sign um, you to get part of what you're doing but right really. <laughs> maybe yeah you know but it's cool we have like we can break contract whenever without penalty and they're oh, not right going to be mad at us so we can jump to a bigger one at some point there That's, is freedom there's no there's no like uh you know they're under no delusions that we're gonna like stay with them forever sure uh, so uh, but anyway, yeah, basically you just have to get on the internet, do a shitload of research, get, find like, um, you know, plan, plan your route. Um, sure. and it helps if basically before you need, before you do a tour, you need to, um, help bands in the cities that you want to tour in play in your city and then they'll help you out in their city. 
that's yeah, the best way to do it. Yeah, exactly. Trade trade favors. Right. Um, but if you're doing it completely blind and you don't know anybody in the city, it's still possible. It's a lot harder though. Sure. Um, if you do that, basically, you need to have a really good demo or really good uh, press kit sure. and send it to wherever you want to play and then send a shitload of emails out to um, other bands that you want to play with and hope that you can put a show together. Um, right. Or find um, a good promoter in the city and see if you can jump on a show that they're putting together. I mean, there's a couple that there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Sure. Um, depending on the situation that you find yourself in, um, depending on where you want to book. But I mean, the short answer is it's just a shitload of research and work. Sure. sure. No, yeah. it's, that's with everything. Player, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, there's nothing that's going to be like, Oh, you just do this and then it works. Like, yeah, I, I had, um, I had Ryan Wells on a couple of days ago. If you aren't following him, you should. He's my favorite cosplayer like in the world. I see, the name sounds familiar to me. He's phenomenal. He does a lot of uh, he does a lot of movie cosplays. That's like his thing. He's cool. not really into anime or video games, but he did Hoggle from Labyrinth. He just nice. did a he just did a Garthrum from Dark Crystal. Like his work is phenomenal, and he's Look, he's made a name for himself so much so that he's done like commissions for Nike and like Jesus Stan Christ, Winston dude. School. He works That's with. That's amazing. Like, yeah, check him out. But he talked about he now does shows. Holy he crap, owns, his stuff is insane. He, oh yeah, he owns a DeLorean. <laughs> that was like his so, end to like geek stuff. So he's doing just fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He he built it over a while, and now it's like screen accurate. But he talked oh about God. building a name for yourself as a cosplayer, mm -hmm. and like I like I like him a lot because he's doing this and he's working with you know the Hinton company. Sometimes he's met with them and like from cosplay taught himself all this stuff and then the fact that he's a dude cosplayer <laughs> the game's already rigged against you absolutely like, cosplay yeah. is not a I, i've been on record cosplay is not a man's game it is want, not if you want anything out of it no it's you know, not anyone can cosplay all day long but nobody's gonna buy your prints right you know it is what it, it's just the name of the game you know it is yeah so it's cool and and the big thing that he was saying is to step his game up you have to work really hard you want to make a name for yourself you have to make a name for yourself Yep. You know, and music is the same way. It really is. I mean, that's the, the really, I hate to just like beat on a cliche. Sure. But Cliches it, are true sometimes. It, it, it is though, like, especially in the arts, because anything that you want to do, you have to, first of all, you have to be, if you want to be successful at it in an artistic field, you have to be really good at it. Sure. Because there are already a hundred people that want to do it as well. Um, sure. So you have to be really good, and there's probably 100 people that are just as good as you. So you have to be really good, and you have to be willing to work a harder than those other 100 people. Exactly. So that's a pretty tall order, you know? It's, absolutely. I have, yeah. I have this like weird self-motivational thing that I do all the time mm -hmm. where every day I ask myself three questions. It's what do I want, how bad do I want it, and then how hard am I willing to work for it? That's really good, man. And like that's the thing with with anything. You know, if you want to accomplish anything, like you said, in the arts, what is it that you want? Decide that. And then you have to want it badly. You know, cuz if you if you don't really want it that bad, then why would you expect to get anything out of it? Absolutely. And then, like Will Smith says, <laughs> be the hardest worker in the room, you know? Absolutely. And that's how it is because there are some people who will be better than you, but that doesn't mean you can't get farther than them. Absolutely. You know, when it comes down to it, it's it's work. Hard work will it, always no, be the return. No, absolutely. I know a lot of I know a ton of people that are much better musicians than me, um, right. that are that are way more talented than me. Um, but uh, you know the, what they're doing is not probably going to ever go anywhere. Sure. Um, it's because they're not willing to you know, and a lot of them do do put work in, but it's like I'll work on this thing that I I this part of it that I like doing. And I'm sure. not going to work on this other part of it. And I, I understand the temptation to do that because, you know, we all feel that way sometimes. Absolutely. But that's the shitty part, though, is you have to do, you have to do the work you want to do and you have to do all the work that is just scutsy and you don't want to do. Sure. Because, like you're saying, you know, you got to want it badly enough. And if you only kind of want it, someone else is going to take it because there's Absolutely. so many people that, you know, want to do this stuff. For sure. Yeah. I actually I just got done watching Kingsman. Have you seen Kingsman? That's on that giant list of shit that I want to watch. You haven't seen Kingsman? 
Oh, dude, it's so no, good. I, I've heard nothing but good things. It's incredible. To my but shame. Yeah. The, the main guy in Kingsman, his name is Taron Egerton. He's this guy out of mm-hmm. Wales. And nice. he, he's gone on record a lot and said, like, he's like, I, there are so many amazing actors out there that are not finding work. He's like, I just got yeah. lucky. I worked hard and I found it. So it's work, work. Anything that you're going to do in life, you have to work for and work harder than everybody else. Or, like, we're overpopulated. You know how many people Absolutely. want the thing that you want? Yeah. You know? So that's an interesting thing to tell, you know, band members, like people who are in a band and want to do something that it's not easy. There, think about how many bands there are in the world, yeah. you know, and what separates them. Like sometimes it's not even talent. There are bands out there that are not very good. No, <laughs> you know, that are doing fine for sure. That are yeah. famous. <laughs> yeah, that makes uh, all right. Tangent again, um, Let's because do it. I want to talk about it. And yes. here we go. Um, that's why we're here. Did you so? Did you see that that whole Corey Hames band or Corey Feldman's band thing, like no. on the Today Show a little while ago? No, I think I saw Corey Feldman and I, and I changed it. Yeah, okay, that's fair. <laughs> um, like, I have such complex feelings about that. Um, so it basically, so he's playing this, let's just get this out of the way, really terrible, terrible, <laughs> terrible music. Sure. Um, and it's like him, it, it's just like a mashup of bad singing and quasi dubstep early 2000s rock, kind of. If, if it was all just that <laughs> yeah and um backed by a bunch of lingerie models in angel lingerie which oh, i mean right. you know understand the reason you would do that but they can't play no. and you know if, so if you're going to do that you should probably get like musicians and then have them <laughs> do something else you know for sure uh, so yes yeah, so the band was really awful uh but they they had a freaking today show slot you know in the morning mm-hmm. And I had such complex feelings about it because they went on, they sucked, and then um, sure. a lot of people uh, were rightly like, "This was terrible." Right. And then Corey Haim or Corey, wow, well, I keep saying Corey, Corey, Haim. Corey, Corey <laughs> Feldman was like, uh, "You know, I I just feel so bullied, and I just wanted to put myself out there. And why does everybody have to be so mean?" And uh, you know, which I don't want to increase negativity in the world. Sure. Um, and I get that, but sure. <laughs> if this is not like a school talent show, this is the friggin' this is the Today Show, sure. you know. And all I could think of watching this is this is a slot that should have gone to a band that deserves it. And sure. there are like a hundred bands right now that are more hundreds and hundreds that uh, definitely would have deserved that that now aren't going to get a chance to play there because you gave it to a guy because he's famous. Right, and probably you thought it was going to be a train wreck. Sure. And so to me, the whole thing felt very exploitive of him because he's a guy that's had a really messed up life. Yes. And, um, you know, um, I don't know. I think uh, I would just like to see um, us value good art more in culture uh, uh, yeah, yeah. above, like, spectacle. For sure. And, um, yeah, I don't know. So uh, I, don't, I, I, I had some conclusion there, but <laughs> anyway. no, I, I know exactly what you mean. I, I have the same sort of comment. I have the same sort of feelings about some actors. Yeah, you know, probably. and the fact that like I, I've only, I've been a, an extra in a bunch of stuff. You know, I've been in a feature that did decent. I'm, I have no delusions about where I'm at. Sure, you know, I'm not great, and I don't have anything to compare myself to myself to be like, oh, I sucked in this, and I was good in this. I well, you're early like, in your career too. Though. Yeah, I have yeah. confidence in my ability. Like, you know, I'm good at what sure. I do. Um, but there are some people that are really bad but are in a ton of movies. Sure. And it's because they have, you know, these connections where art isn't necessarily it anymore. You know, Corey yep. Feldman got the spot because of Corey Feldman, not because he's good. Right, of you course. Know? Yeah. And then it can turn into uh, – he can – like if his music sucks, his music sucks. But he says that he feels bullied like he's taking that personally and it's it's a separation from the artist and the art. Kind of exactly thing. exactly um, and also if you're you have to understand i mean i don't want to shit on your thing right you know but, but if you're bad. going to put it out there as a you know in the public eye as a piece of art then you have to then criticism comes with that sure you know sure. if you want to be respected as an artist for doing what you're trying to do then criticism is part of that otherwise you're not it's not real 
you know? Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially with music. For sure. Music is a thing that you put out there to express yourself, but also to give to people. Absolutely. You know, it's like if, yeah. a chef, it's if a chef puts out some food and you're like, this tastes really bad. And you're like, you're making fun of my abilities. Like, right. no, I'm just saying your food's bad. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe you can make a better one some other time. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Can we get a new chef in here that's right. probably better than you? That yeah. isn't the owner's son. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I totally understand that. <clears throat> but yeah, no, it's a, it's it's an interesting thing that we're in. <laughs> Making any anything artistic is interesting, and it's so cool to see how you guys have built traction. Like, anytime I see a band that goes on tour, and the fact that you went to a place that you've never been before, and a lot of people showed up, is such a testament to your music, which is yeah, like, it's so amazing. That's so Thank so cool. Thank you, man. And the fact that your band isn't just you and a guitar; it's a nine-piece soul band that yeah. did this is even that much more of an achievement. It's definitely a logistical achievement. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> if nothing Absolutely. Else. I mean, what what made you want to go to uh, North Carolina and Tennessee? Like, were you like, this is our cutoff point, or did you just look at it like realistically? This is our money. This is how much it's going to cost, and just kind of play within that playground. Yeah, essentially the latter. We were like, sure. here's the time that we've got. Makes um, sense. How many shows can we pack in in good spots in this sure. time? that we haven't been before where we can expand our, you know, sort of market footprint, um, sure. without making ourselves completely insane, you know, Makes cause sense. you have to have a break day every, you know, four or five shows or you will go nuts. Um, right. so yeah, but basically that, is... that was it. We had this amount of time. Where can we go and get the most out of it? Sure. That's a great tip for, you know, any musicians who are wanting to tour that are listening to this to put in a break day. Got to do a break day, man. <laughs> Absolutely. And also, however long you think it's going to take you to get somewhere, it's going to take you longer, probably. <laughs> That's, Give yourself you know. a little bit of a grace period. Yeah, exactly. It was funny when I started on the tour before all the shit went to shit. I was like, uh, I went through in every city and I was like, oh, this is great. We're going to, you know, I'm going to bring my protein bars with me and try and stay healthy on the bus. We brought all this bread. <laughs> like, we're going to eat here. You know, and um, then in every city, I was like, oh, here's the gym so I can work out every couple of days and try and stay healthy. <laughs> All that much shit. <laughs> it's like the re reality of it is it's like, get in the van, go, you drive. Exactly. Something happened to the van, fix the van, get back in the van, you keep driving. Shit, we're late for sound check. Oh, God, I haven't eaten anything yet today. Crap, I got a sound check. You go sound check. Oh, I still haven't eaten anything. What's near me? Beer and pretzels. And that's all you eat. And that's right? that's your day. You know? So, sure. like, you know, you just gotta, have to, you have to go roll. with the flow a little bit. I hear um, you. I did the same thing. Uh, I did the same thing when I went to the UK and Ireland. Yeah. I, was, uh, I like, had an itinerary. On this day, yeah. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And at the end, you're like, I'm just going to walk in this direction and see what I find. Right. That's fine. <laughs> right? That's, 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 what, that's how you have to approach life. Just roll yeah, with it. Absolutely. Because it's gonna take longer to get there. Your van might yes. break. You right. have to just you have to just go with it. Um, yes, I mean it's all good to plan as much as you can. Yeah, but don't go in blind on a so, tour. <laughs> right. Some some shit is going to break, and some things are gonna go wrong, and it's gonna be really stressful. And you just part of it, you just have to say, you know what, you know, it, everything can't be perfect, and that's the universe, and just get the best out of it that you can. Because if you're worrying too much about any little thing that diverts from your idea of what it's going to be, you're just going to drive yourself nuts. Sure, you know? sure. Uh, do you? Does your band have a rider? And is, is there anything fun on it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I should read it to you. Hold on. Read it. Um, For those see. that don't know what a rider is, I'll let you explain. Okay, so a rider is um, basically it's your it, it. Well, it says a couple things. Like ours is a rider slash stage plot slash tech sheet. So it's like, here's what we look like on stage, so you know how to arrange the stage for us. Here's all of our tech inputs, so it's easier for the sound guy to do his job. Sure. And then, you know, here's what we need in terms of other stuff. Like we need, you know, this many bottles of water on stage or this many glasses of water or, you know, some towels to, sure. or whatever. So that's like standard stuff you put in a rider. Or like, hey, we have this big piece of uh, equipment, like scenery that we take with us or something. Sure. But 
Um, you can also put weird shit in your rider just to yes. see if they give it to you. There are some um, famous ones out there. <laughs> absolutely. So you know the Van Halen one, right? Yes, the No yeah. Brown M and M's. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and do you know the story behind that though? Like why they did that beyond no. being ridiculous? So being ridiculous, I am still convinced is part of it because it's Van Halen. Sure. You gotta but, pick um, out brown M and M's. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I think uh, apparently what it was is that. Um, they were going on tour to all of these like really different venues all around the country. And they had like a shitload of pyrotechnics and, you know, big scenery and costumes and shit. They put on like a really big, like, you know, eighties arena rock show. Right. And so basically uh, a lot of times people don't read your writers and they were worried that if, um, like the ceiling heights were too low for their stuff. They could light something on fire with the pyrotechnics. Sure. So basically they buried this brown M&M thing in there because they would know if they got backstage and there were no you know, M&Ms with the brown M&Ms picked out that it sure. meant, hey, these guys didn't read through the whole rider and we should double check everything because it's possible we could light this place on fire with our pyrotechnics. Wow, that's actually incredible. Right? I thought so it was just smart. he didn't want brown M and M's. That's super yeah. smart. Yeah, um, it's like a failsafe. Absolutely. Now we have absolutely no reason to do that of because course. we don't have crazy pyrotechnics. You know, I'll know if you read our uh, our tech sheet because it's the first thing in the rider. Um, right. But yes, but so our rider asks for. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Um, it asks for uh, well, all the real stuff is asks for like two um, towels on stage for. Uh, Alex and Justin, because they get really sweaty because of course. drumming and stuff. Um, water on stage because we all get really hot um, yeah. jumping around and stuff. And then the goofy stuff, we asked for a bowl of only red Sour Patch Kids, um, <laughs> a um, um, Jack White's guacamole recipe and chips, and a bottle <laughs> of Macallan 21. <laughs> and so far, it's never happened. Oh, but, you know, say, has it ever happened? No, it doesn't. Oh, not. <laughs> and and two cases of beer, um, of and we have like several different options of cases of beer, and that actually has happened. Some people have got really? us before, which is pretty cool. I'd yeah. I'd say so. You're like, I'm gonna yeah. play music. You give me beer. That sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Yeah. So that was good. That's so funny. Only red yeah. sour patch kids. It's Only red sour patch kids, which I think are the best. So I mean, that's not. I'm not gonna be upset if someone actually does that. Sure. Sure. Pretty much. For, we had at Tampa Bay. We shared a five-pound bag of sour. Oh my cheese. God! Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I yeah. only ate the orange ones, so that's I would have I would have only orange. That's fine. You could do it. There are so many. Right. Right. Didn't matter. You just gotta you gotta add something weird like two peanuts in a cup. <laughs> <laughs> I should do that. I should do that. That way you'll that's have, not hard like, to do. And when yeah. you make when you guys make it big, you know you'll see all these things and then just two peanuts in a cup. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Like, What's what? this for? Just put it in there. Don't worry about it. Right. It's for the drummer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't, mm, we don't mess with him. He's a weird right. guy. Right. Yeah. We know he's, we know drummers are crazy, so we have to be like, just don't peanuts in the cup, please. That's right. <laughs> don't question it. Just do it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's for this weird ritual that I don't want to get into. Yeah, exactly. He took a vow of silence. No yeah. Way. <laughs> yeah. He um, has a, he has an un, unpronounceable religion. Yes. That, it yeah. involves peanuts. The peanuts go underneath his lips so he can play better. They just yeah, scatter. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this makes it a bit weirder and weirder. Right. Scientifically <laughs> verified. That's right. Yeah. Um, so you guys have a demo. Demos are very important for bands. When you're when you're trying to get um, yeah. people to book you. Yes. Um, what went into the demo and what tips would you give to someone who's looking to make one? Um, so actually... We have, um, we've got, well, we've got a press kit, um, okay. but we've got a lot more than a demo. We've got, we've released one album. Yes, um, correct. And then we've got a new EP that we just released uh, in the beginning of the summer. Right. Um, and we've got a music video, too. Uh, I don't know, have, have you seen our music? I have not seen the music video. Yeah, you should check our music video out. It's what? good. It gives you a better idea of what we do. Um, right on. That's yeah, smart. you've. If you search Savance's Soul Darkness, you don't need to watch it right now, obviously, but... Um, <laughs> Hold that thought. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, cut the end of but that's what it is. Um, gotcha. Yeah, so um, what 
tips for recording an album? Or... Yes, for anyone that wants to do what you're doing. You know, say they're listening, you're in a band, be like, all right, obviously work really hard. Yes. Um, or actually, you know what, Better, I'll rephrase it. What is something that was a hurdle you were not expecting Ooh. when you started doing this? Um, oh, man, we got a bunch. Uh, sure. I mean, just logistics and planning, just the scuts work of doing that, um, sure. especially if people have jobs, is Absolutely. always a pain. You, get, you have to be ready for that. Um, you, as much as we like to pretend this isn't a thing that we do, um, right. and it sort of makes me feel icky, marketing is very important and you need to have, you need to know how to pitch your band and you need to know how to describe your band well. Um, and you should, yeah, you should have an idea and you should have a, a musical direction that you're going in. Um, and that's another thing also is as much as everybody is cohesive and of the same mind of what you're doing, there's probably always going to be some creative differences that you're going to have to be able to deal with. So when you're looking to start a band, uh, good musicianship, obviously, very important. Sure. But even more than that is these need to be people that you can be friends with um, and that you can have real conversations with about um, – you know, how far do you want to go? How committed are you willing to be? Um, you know, are they good at compromising? Uh, you know, these have to be people that you can get along with, uh, because you're going to be around them a lot and you're going to yeah. be around them in really stressful situations. Sure. Um, that's why bands break up sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. And, sure. you know, make sure that everyone's comfortable with the box of you know, the sort of creative box you put yourself in. Sure. Um, however small or large you decide to make that. Sure, make sure make sure everybody's on the same page. Right, which is yeah. hard to do. It's hard I, to do. Absolutely. With creative people, you know, when you're in a soul band and one guy uh, one day goes, I, I just want to be screamo like for this single. Is that cool? Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. No, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, this is um, – I really like this song, but can I play The Little Mermaid on my guitar um, <laughs> over the end of it? I just feel like it would really fit with the breakdown at the That's end That's right. Of the can we just put Under the Sea somewhere in yeah. the forest? Just like somewhere. Like... <laughs> I'm not picky. Exactly. <laughs> I just feel like it needs to be in there somewhere. For sure. For sure. But, yeah, so I think that'll I think that'll about wrap that one up. This cool, was man. awesome. Thanks for having me, dude. This was great. Yeah, thanks yeah. for thanks for coming on. Scheduling. Yeah. Speaking of scheduling, that's difficult. Podcasts. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. Absolutely, I can only imagine. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. I wanted to get into more uh, more Star Wars stuff with you, but I didn't get a chance. Oh, dude. Yeah. We can uh, oh, we can get into more Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know how long you want this to go, but you know what uh, I'll do. I'll I'll, I'll uh, we'll end this and then we'll keep talking. <laughs> sounds good. Sounds so good. Everyone, so everyone, uh, where can people find you and your band online to follow you? Oh, um, so the easiest thing to do is just search Savants of Soul in Google. Um, I mean, savantsofsoul.com is our website. Cool. Uh, pretty easy. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I think we just got a Snapchat now, um, which our singer runs. I don't have anything to do with it, but he's a really entertaining guy, so follow him on Snapchat. He's funny. Sure. <clears throat> um, I'm on Twitter. Uh, all of us have our own Twitters. I'm JG Savant on Twitter. Uh, um, and Savant is S-A-V-A-N-T-S. Uh, in case you're not familiar with – yeah, that's Savant's, right? Savant's, yep. not, not it's the like singular. Sesame Street. You said, yes. ah. <laughs> um, in case you're not familiar with the word, uh, which apparently um, many people are not. So there you go. Sure. Yep. Awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, happy to happy to be on. Thanks for having me, man. Right. Well, I'll have you back. Because that's what I do. <laughs> um, anytime. Anytime. Right on. Well, the end.